Hello there guys, it's Joey, and if you missed the votives, perhaps you might like the beeswax version. So this is the Sorceress of Avalon. I am taking it and I'm running with it because I freaking adore it. I really, really love this energy and this, this feel that this set has, and I was like, can I do it in beeswax? Do I have colours for the beeswax? Can I? Can yes, yes I can. And I can offer one and only one of these as a set. So if you missed the other video, it is for the three big sorceresses from Avalonic Law. Uh, Morgana, Le Fay, Morgos and Nimue. And I talked on the other video at length about how the sorceresses in the myths get a bit of a raw deal and the Christianization of a lot of the mythos meant that the sorceresses became demonized and their power became evil and they became overly sexualized and uh, or you know they kind of weak and locked away sort of thing uh, but they became like nasty characters rather than being powerful strong female archetypes and with the votives I wanted to peel back and look at these women and I really embrace their energies, embrace them uh, for perhaps a little bit more how they started maybe uh, at least in terms of positive female sorcerers archetype and Morgana Le Fay and we're going to move these two these are a set, they will all be together and I'm hoping you're going to be able to see the shimmy shimmy because uh, they're very shimmy shimmy but the light is not great, it's grey outside so I will attempt to move it about in an attempt to get to see the shimmy shimmy uh, I can see it down here best <laughs> there is a lot of shimmy shimmy oh so magical sparkles okay come on come on sparkle for me, oh there you go <laughs> You can see it right, right on the edge there. <laughs> so the uh, Morgana Le Fay is this beautiful deep purple again. And her energies are mistress of magic. The deep mysteries, the spiritual guidance, psychic ability, the female power. She's the, the best known archetype. And I've talked about her at length in the other video. So there, there is lots of information in the votive video. I don't want to go on too long. Uh, on this one because I have so much to do today <laughs> but needless to say the deep purple is is so Morgana Le Fay and it has the same energy interwoven as the votives did and I chose to go with obsidian for all of them for all of the candles for all of the sorceresses it provides a a unity across the three candles so it brings the three candles together and really that unity comes about from what to me obsidian can represent and some people might be like it's a bit fiery, a bit volcanic and yeah, I get that but to me obsidian only, well, it's only little, it's only a little obsidian <laughs> Uh, but obsidian is a seer stone. It's, it's used to see the future. It's used to scry. A lot of scrying mirrors are made from obsidian in modern times. And it's, it's looking into the depths of the night, into the void, and conjuring up images of the future in one's psyche, in one's mental state. It's the wild places as well. I, I've talked about obsidian and on one of my I Can't Witch Without videos and to me it's a little bit like the reflection of animal eyes in the night or the, the, the void and the hidden mysteries and the depths of magic itself and it's, it's really quite mystical as stones go and you tend to get obsidian being like oh yes uh, obsidian is, is fire and it's for protection and you can use it to destroy things and you can but Obsidian really does have this wild magic side to it that I think really ought to be harnessed a little bit more. Uh, I freaking adore obsidian because it is one of the 
crystals associated with the goddess Morrigan in modern times. And because Morgana le Fay is believed by some to be an archetype that was derived from Morrigan law, from the Celtic law, and sort of made into a woman rather than a goddess, it kind of it kind of works on that phase. It kind of it kind of works. But for me, I really like the idea of it being like a sorcerer's stone. So a sorceress's stone in this case. <laughs> so therefore all of them have obsidian for that reason. There you go. I said I wasn't going to waffle on and I am. Right so this is Morgos. So if you remember Morgos from last week she's the seductress. So she gets sort of demonised because of her sexual power. She becomes a queen in her own right, uh, but she, she marries a guy who's often considered a traitor. And uh, in a lot of the myth, it's like that she's sort of demonised for uh, sleeping with younger men and having sexual relations outside of her uh, marriage, which her husband does too, but he's fine to do it, but she's not in, in the myths. And it's a bit... In, in the mythos. But basically if we turn that around and it's looking at sexual power, sensuality, femininity, wiles, she's very sharp, she's very intellectual, she commands presence, she commands in terms of politics as well, she's very very astute and she's very perceptive and it's, it gets sort of turned into guile rather than uh, if if she'd been a man in that mythos, it probably would have been, you know, like warlike stratagem or kingship ruled through the, the mind. But with it being because she's a queen, it gets reduced to guile. So it talks a little bit about in in um, the spell candle talks about this energy of, of embracing one's sexual power, uh, being all that we can be and, and not being ashamed of who we are for our sexual selves. Again, there's loads and loads of shimmy. I hope I hope we're going to be able to see. I think you can actually see a little bit better on this one because the glitter's a little bit lighter. Yeah, you can as I kind of turn it down the bottom there again. The shimmer, I have sat there and worked it through. So it's <laughs> it's very, very there. So honest, it's there. And again, obsidian, which we've talked about. So we don't need to talk about again. And last but not least is the Nimue. Nimaway. Now, on the store, although I don't have any in stock currently, because I don't have any of the colour of wax in currently, there is a Lady of the Lake already. And that Lady of the Lake is this beautiful ethereal blue with this turquoisey shimmer working through. So this is really focusing on Nimaway, perhaps more so as a sorceress. Uh, sometimes she's used in in interchangeably, sorry, I was going to say inextricably, that's not right, interchangeably, uh, that's a lot of vowels for getting words mixed up, Joe. Right, um, <laughs> sorry, it's just uh, in my own head a bit too much right there, there you go. So this is in her role more as a, a priestess, as a, as a sorceress, as a wielder of magic, and she, in the mythos, uh, sort of gets uh, demonised as the, the one that traps Merlin. Uh, in some of the mythos she's his lover, in some she's just his pupil, she's very powerful, she wants to learn the magical arts. This is sometimes seen as a bad thing because it's fine for Merlin to do it, but <sighs> the mythos you have to roll your eyes sometimes and see beyond that. Uh, that, that, you know, that she was the pupil of, of Merlin, like, like he saw all that magic, all that power, all that potential. That's all you should need to know. I associate Nimue very much with the energy of rebirth, the answers, mirrors, reflections, emotions, and conquering insurmountable odds. Some of this comes from a correlation between her and Lady of the Lake, giving Excalibur, and Excalibur being the answer, and taking Excalibur back once Arthur has died. So she, if you consider her to be in that role, then that means she guards ultimate power and she looks after it and it's it's kind of like you know man can't wield it unless he's very very pure of heart but she guards it all the time what does that say um 
but she's very very about you know reflections and the emotional states and, and really a rebirth energy uh, that she has the power of transformation in all guises so there you go and again let's try and get some shimmy shimmer this shimmer is beautiful I'm worried this is the one you know oh you can kind of see it right if you look down the bottom here it's it's not at all as subtle <laughs> as it's pretending it is there is a lot of shimmy shimmy working through this I can see it right here the interesting thing about this one is it actually looks a little bit more watery uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. down here so it's this lovely pale lilac -y purple again for the colour magic I promise it's plenty of shimmer <laughs> maybe it'll look uh, better on the camera than I'm worried about because sometimes that happens it does, I can't see it as, as well through the uh, camera and then on the final rendered video it looks okay so there you go uh, beeswax and there is a little scent for each one woven into the wax and the glitter is woven into the wax and the magic is woven into the wax I'm doing this really strange sort of cycling motion as I'm talking that's really odd okay um, anyway as you can probably tell I am super super excited for this this energy I can't stop working about working about it working around it working with it thinking about it talking about it talking nonsense you know the usual um, and I really just I really really love it so there's going to be one of the, this a set they're going to all be available together and it's going to be one set available for you all and uh, once it's gone it's gone because I can't guarantee which colour waxes I'm going to get in so because it's locally sourced and I tend to get what I'm, I can get so uh, there will be one one set of three of these beeswax so if you miss out on the votives this is your opportunity but there will only be one there can only be one i don't know i don't know what the matter with me is i'm in a funny old mood so this is the sorceresses of Avalon beeswax candle set many blessings